Hey guys, today I'm going to talk you through how to take a spoken phrase and record it and then turn that into a drum kit. So the first thing I'm going to do is record a phrase into an audio track. Uh, I need to enable the audio track by hitting the, the little red record button and you can see that the the green meter here indicates that I am indeed getting signal. If you're not getting that, you need to try and work out why. So I've just picked a little phrase about the music that I like and I'm going to record it now just by uh, pressing this record button. They don't make music like Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd anymore. So there's my phrase and I chose it deliberately. I choose Zeppelin and Floyd not only because I love them but also because they have the P, the plosive in them and I know that's going to sound great uh, for a kick drum. So next I need to go over into my instruments and choose the simpler. Don't open the menu. We don't want any of those. Those already have sounds in them. We just want an empty simpler and we'll drag that into a MIDI track. If you don't have any MIDI tracks, just drag it here and it'll create a new one for you. And now you can see my empty simpler says drop sample here. That's where I'm going to put the sample of me talking. And there it is. And if you recall, the beauty of a sampler is that you can play stuff across the keyboard. So if I hit middle C, it's going to be in key. They don't make music like Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. In. If I go an octave lower, an octave higher than the original and you can hear it's got that kind of stutter thing going on that's because warp is on I can either change the warp mode like this they don't make music like Led Zeppelin. oh that's pretty funny um, or I just turn warp mode off and when warp mode is off if you play it higher it's gonna go faster and if you play it lower it's gonna go slower so here's the original they don't make here's the higher one and here's a much lower one, two octaves below the original. To start with, I'm going to try to find a kick drum and I'm going to look for a plosive. And I think I'm going to use the P from Zeppelin. They don't make music like Led Zeppelin. And it's somewhere in there. Let's have a listen. There it is. So I'll move my flags in, zoom in and try to isolate the, the plosive, the P sound. It is exactly exactly what I'm looking for. So I'll turn off looping, turn off snapping, and you can see that it's pretty quiet, so I'm going to boost up the gain a little. Now even though as you zoom out you can see that the rest of the phrase has got crazy loud, that's going to be really useful amount of gain right there. Uh, it's also pretty high, so I'm going to turn it down one octave. To do that I go into controls here, and then transp is of course transpose, and I'm going to drag it down one octave, which is 12 semitones. You could also, of course, just click on that and type in minus 12. And now when I play middle C on my keyboard, also known as C3, it's sounding much lower. But now um, it's got this sort of high element to it, which I don't like. So I'm going to use the filter to cut out some of the higher parts. And now when I play that, it's sounding much better. I'm going to add a compressor to it to give it a little bit of a boost and a bit of a snap to it. So just drag the compressor over, bring the threshold down some. You can see I'm getting some healthy gain reduction there. Might open the attack a little bit, increase the ratio. That's sounding pretty cool. Um, additionally, to make it sound a bit fatter, I'm going to put the saturator on it, which is like a distortion plugin turn up the drive a little. That might make it a bit louder, so I might want to change the output volume here as well. Yeah, that's pretty loud, so turn that right down. There we go. And lastly, uh, it's now got some, some, it's reintroduced some higher elements to it. So I'm going to bring in the EQ8, and I'm going to boost the bass, because it's a bass drum, and I'm going to cut off the higher elements. Let's see how that sounds. That's using a low pass filter. Just watch that part of the video again if you're not sure what I just did. That's sounding better. And lastly, I'm going to duplicate that to really make the most of the effect here. So click on that, Command D, and it just made another one. Now have a look to this. Okay, it's sounding a bit loud. I'll just turn down the gain here. That's pretty awesome. Probably another compressor could work too to suppress the gain a little. At the end, I just command D that compressor and I'll turn down the output volume on the compressor here. 
there now we have a fat fat kick drum so now you can see though as well as my simpler I've got a bunch of other stuff going on that's my kick drum sound not just the simpler on its own but all those things so I'm gonna select all of them like this click on the first one slide all the way back to the uh, sorry click on the last one then slide all the way back to the first one shift click on it now you can see they're all selected command G or if you prefer right click and group makes them all into one thing and then what I need to do is put a drum rack in here so go into instruments and I'm not going to go into any of there I'm just going to grab the empty drum rack and drag it into one that I already labeled drums and as we know our kick drum is going to go in there C1 so this is my kick drum I'm going to drag it grab it from here if I grab it from here I'm only going to grab the simpler and not all the other things that go with it. So I want to get the whole group. This is called an instrument rack. Grab the whole thing, drag it up to my drums, down into C1. And now when I play C1 on my drum rack, I get my kick drum sound. The next thing I want to do is work on a hi-hat. So again, now my MIDI channel here is empty because the simpler was taken out of it and used for the kick drum. So I'm going to drag another simpler in there. And just like before, I'm going to drag the audio track, uh, the audio recording into here. Um, and this time I'm looking for some kind of a hi-hat sound. I'll turn off loop, turn off snap, turn off warp. Although, you know, feel free to experiment with those if you like. Here's my sample again. They don't make music like Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. I think the... The F sound of Floyd is going to be good for a hi-hat. Pink Floyd. So it's in there somewhere. Let's zoom in a little. Floyd. Floyd. There's a little bit of cut in there, so I'll just get rid of that. Floyd. There it is. I also, of course, don't want the oid, so just want that. Um, I'm going to add a bit of gain because it's a little bit quiet. There we go. I'm also going to see what it sounds like a little bit higher. So again, click on controls. Again, one octave, uh, 12 semitones sounds really good to me. So again, use a bit of compression just to see what it can do. Bring the threshold down. It actually sounds quite a lot like a hi-hat, which is kind of neat, really. Yeah, that's really cool. I might bring the output volume down a little. There we go. Um, and again, this is a much simpler one. I'm going to group it, click on the last one, shift click on the first one, command G to create a group. And once again, drag it up into the drum rack. So onto the title bar here, and then the hi-hats. And I'm sure you recall the hi-hats go on F sharp one. So now on my drum rack, I've got a kick and hi-hat by hitting F sharp. I might just relabel those while I'm here. So command R, turn that into a kick. Command R, turn that into, a, actually it's a closed hi-hat because I'm gonna add an open one later. So that's that. The next thing I'm gonna do is a snare drum. Once again, instruments, empty simpler into my MIDI track, drag this uh, audio recording into my simpler, turn off loop, turn off snap, turn off warp. And uh, this time, I think for the snare, for the snare, I'm going to get the K of make music. They don't make me. There it is. You can see it just sticking out there like a sore thumb. There's the K. Let's zoom in. Yep. So I'm going to try and isolate that as much as I can from everything else. There it is. This time I'm going to try a little trick because I want it to sound more like a snare drum, but it's kind of short and I want a, a longer sound. I just increase the gain there. Now to make it sound longer, I'm going to add some reverb. So double click on the reverb and um, instead of this, I'm going to make it longer, like around five seconds. Maybe a little bit shorter, but it's still sounding a bit long, but it's sounding kind of good. So what I can do is put on there a gate to cut off the sound a little. Um, if I, you can see here, when I push my key, 
you're not hearing anything because the sound is below the threshold. So if I bring the threshold down a little, about almost, there we go, getting some good sound there. And um, I might bring it up just a smidge. There we go. So now it's getting through, but the release is so short that you're not hearing much. Release lets the gate stay open a bit longer. If I now open the gate, there we go. So now I'm getting my reverbed, um, my reverb drum sound. And once again, I might just crank up the volume just a little bit here. There we go. Turn down the release a little. Maybe raise the threshold a little. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So in my current settings, I've got a threshold of around minus 25 and a release of around 220 milliseconds. That's my snare sound. Let's uh, again, click on the last one, shift click on the first one, command G to make a group, drag the group up into drums. And I'm sure as you recall, the snare goes into D1. So rename that snare. And now I have kick in C1. Snare in D1, that should be a little bit louder. And what I can do is actually um, open this up here and make the snare louder here too. There we go. And my hi-hat, so. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, what I might do now is try and record a drum clip with my kick, snare, and closed hats. I'm gonna put the tempo down to about 106. I think that's a, a tempo that's feeling good for me. And I'm gonna record a clip. The first thing, of course, I'm gonna do though is put my click on so I can hear that tempo. I'll do a practice run. I kinda of like that. All right, I'm gonna record that kick and snare pattern. Oh, I also might put on uh, record quantization. Oh. Already done it. There we go. So here we go. Get the clip going for a bar, and then when I'm ready to start, I'll record in the clip. Two, three, four. There's my pattern. I might add some hi hats now, and of course, the way to do that is by using this button here, the overdub button. Again, I'll just have a quick practice run first. That's not bad at all. All right, next thing I'm going to do is try to add an open hi hat sound. Once again, simpler into the MIDI track, drag the um, audio recording into there, turn off loop, turn off snap, turn off warp. Once again, if you want to try with those, go for it. Um, and I think for my open hi-hat sound, I'm going to use the word or the or sound of anymore. It anymore. There we go. Um, let's just isolate that vowel there. More, more, more. I don't want the M, I just want the more, 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 There we go. I think I'm going to pitch it up once again. Let's see how high it can go and still sound good. I know it's not a traditional open hi-hat, but I'm just going to try that and see how it goes. This time, I'm going to add some reverb, but uh, a much shorter reverb than what I added for the snare drum. Let's see. How about something even under a second? Oh, that's kind of nice. And again, I might compress that. But um, this time I'm gonna see what happens if I put the compressor after the reverb. Normally you put the compressor before the reverb, but let's, let's try it and see. And again, I might get a little bit of snap by opening the attack a little bit more and the ratio a little bit more. That's pretty cool. And once again, click on the first one. Shift click on the last one, command G. I've made a group there, grab from the group here. Now, if you recall, open hi-hats go here on A sharp or B flat. And now when I play my drums, I've got, 
I know that's a funny sounding uh, open hi hat, but we're just gonna gonna go with it. And the last thing I'm gonna do, I might because I've already played some hi hats in. I might just change my hi hat pattern a little bit and put uh, move some of these closed ones into opens. I think what I'm gonna do is after each snare drum, I'm gonna uh, move the closed into an open. So there's a snare, there's a that one. And maybe I'll do something different on the last one just for a bit of variation. Snare and closed. And maybe here, instead of doing this one, I'll do the one before it. Just see how it sounds. Let's see. No, that didn't work because that's actually on the kick drum. So I'll move that one back down and just go with the original pattern. Um, and there you have it. That's how you create drums using a vocal sample. I hope you can do the same.